This is the new 7-inch quadcopter from Geparcy, the MOZ7. And I have literally just taken it out of the box, and it's time for me to get it set up to fly it so I can review it. And like always, I'm gonna invite you to come along with me for the ride. If you've got this exact quadcopter and you wanna know how to get it going from the moment of taking it out of the box to the moment of flying it, this is the video for you. Or if you're just interested in watching me set up, an, well, I've done a lot of these videos, but we're gonna do another one today. If you're just interested in watching me set up a quadcopter, come along, I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're gonna learn something today. The very first thing I'm going to do is install these antennas on the quadcopter. It is a habit of mine to never power up a quadcopter with the video antennas uh, uninstalled. Now, this quadcopter has the DJI O3 air unit in it, and the O3 air unit, unlike many older analog video transmitters, it will not be damaged if you power it up with no antennas. Uh, but the I have, I've been doing this so long and I am so used to analog video transmitters that will just fry themselves instantly if you power them up with no antennas that it just is an ingrained habit that I cannot bring myself to break. In case you're wondering, the way to tell if an antenna is on tight enough is if you try to twist the antenna, and it will not twist, that means you've got it on tight enough. When the antenna is loose, then you can twist it, and you can see even if I hold this little brass nut at the bottom, I can still twist it. I'm gonna tighten that down. The tightness of the brass nut is not what you're concerned with. It's the brass nut being tight enough that the antenna itself is friction fit and secure. The next thing I'm gonna do is update the firmware on my O3 air unit, activate it if it needs to be activated, and bind it to my DJI goggles. And in order to do that, GetBarcy have actually covered the USB port on the air unit with this metal door, so I'm gonna need to use a 1.5 millimeter hex driver to remove this screw, and I'm gonna pull off this door. There we go. And there is the USB port for our air unit. I'm gonna plug that into my computer, and I'm gonna start up the app DJI Assistant 2 Consumer Drone Series. If you don't have that app installed, you'll need to install it. I'll put a link in the video description below where you can download it. I had a little trouble getting the USB to plug all the way in. The metal sidewall of the quadcopter was kind of rubbing up against the USB port, and I kind of didn't want to jam it in. I was worried about breaking the air unit. With a little careful application of force, it did go in, and now we can see that the air unit is lit up, and we've got a USB drive that popped up on my desktop. That USB drive is the internal storage of the air unit. We don't need to worry about that right now. Instead, in the DJI Assistant 2 app, we should see the air unit. We're gonna click on it. It looks like we are on the latest firmware. Here is the latest firmware, and it says refresh, which means that that is the firmware that's already on there. Great, the air unit is good to go. Next, I'm gonna get my goggles. I am working with the DJI Goggles 2. You could also be working with the V2 goggles. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna go ahead and power those up. We're also gonna to need to power up the quadcopter in order to bind the air unit. Uh, it will light up if you just plug in USB, but it will not be able to bind. So I'm gonna plug a 6S battery in here on my goggles. I'm going to press the bind button, which on the goggles too is right here between the eyepieces. If you're using the goggles Integra, it is going to be, I believe, a long press on the power button, but I don't have the goggles Integra here. Uh, and on the V2 goggles, there's a bind button right next to the power jack. So we'll press that. They'll begin beeping, indicating they are binding. And F you. <laughs> we have to remove the side plate on the other side to get at the bind button. Everybody wants to put their side plates on their quadcopters to protect things and it just gets in the way. On the air unit, the bind button is going to be right here down below the LED. When you press it, it will begin blinking and then go green and you are bound. At this point, you should have picture in the goggles and I want to show you if you couldn't get it to bind, one reason why it might not have bound. You see, the goggles can be in several different modes. If I go to the status menu, notice that right now I am in the DJI O3 air unit mode. But if you are in one of the other modes, like the DJI Mini 3, the DJI Mavic, there are several other different types of drones that these goggles could be bound to. If you're in one of these other modes, then it will not bind to the O3 air unit. You need to go to this menu and switch to the DJI O3 air unit mode. I'm going to solve this one on my own. Yeah, here's where I break it, folks. have to be able to plug the flight controller in. Oh, oh, I got it. I got it. I figured it out. 
Uh, ho -ho! That wasn't as hard as it needed to be. Uh, I would like to say I don't see documentation of that anywhere in GetRC's paperwork, but uh, maybe they just assume you're smart enough to figure it out. We're going to plug that in, and we're going to start Betaflight Configurator. Now, if you have never downloaded Betaflight Configurator and set it up, we're not going to do that in this video. I've got another video about that, and I'll link it in the video description below. It's kind of a one-time process. It'll take a little bit of work. Maybe it won't take any work. Maybe it'll be easy. Uh, but once you've got Betaflight installed, we will start up Betaflight Configurator, and we should see in the upper right hand corner when we plug in a new COM port up here and we're going to hit connect and we should see Betaflight connected to our flight controller. Yay! And the first thing I'm curious about is what version of Betaflight do they ship this quadcopter with? Because Betaflight 4.4 has a couple of new features that are very, very good if you have a digital video transmitter. And I'm very happy to see that they have in fact shipped it with Betaflight 4.4 on it. Fantastic. Before I start screwing around with this configuration, there is something you need to do with every new pre-build that you get, every new flight control that you get, and that is you need to make a backup of the configuration. I'm gonna do that by going to the presets tab and I'm hitting the button save backup. And you can take the name that they give you or you can give it a descriptive name of your own, GEPRC Moz 7. I always like to put the Betaflight version number, BF442 as delivered out of box. I don't know, something like that. And that way, as I go screwing around with the configuration, I will always be able to get it back to this factory fresh state. It's not always easy. You might think, well, if I screw it up, I'll just download the configuration from the manufacturer's website. <laughs> you sweet summer child. And it's not always as easy to do as you think it might ought to be. So save that file. Now we can screw around to our heart's content. And the very first thing I want to know is whether they have shipped it with high definition OSD. They have not. Oh, oh, get RC, get RC. Uh, look at this on-screen display right here. This is what we're going to see in our goggles. In fact, let me power this up here. I'll show you. So notice right here that these on-screen display elements look basically how they look in the Betaflight configurator, except notice that they are really big letters and they are clustered in the center of the screen. You see, Betaflight was originally designed for old analog standard definition cameras, and that means it assumes that you have a 4.3 screen, not a wide screen, a 16.9 screen. And it assumes that the screen is very low resolution, and so it has great big honking letters. That's fine, I guess, but we can do better, and we're gonna. We're gonna change this default configuration right off the bat. And it's interesting because they have got it set to high definition right here. We can see it's set to high definition, but right here we can see the screen is not widescreen, it's 4.3, and I know the reason for that. This is a paste bin link to my OSD configuration for Betaflight. Now, you don't have to use my exact OSD, although you can. I'll put a link to this down in the video description below if you want to use my exact OSD layout. But the two lines we actually need are these two lines, set OSD canvas width equals 53, canvas height equals 20. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click copy those lines. I'm going to come over to Betaflight configurator and go to the CLI and I'm gonna right click, paste those lines in and hit enter. And then I need to type the word save, S-A-V-E, and hit enter. And after I do that, you will see that now Betaflight Configurator correctly realizes that I have a widescreen goggle and it's correctly showing the OSD, but that doesn't actually match what I'm seeing here in my goggles. Why is that? And the answer to that question is that in the goggles, we also need to go into the menu we need to go down to settings, we need to go to display, and we need to change the canvas mode from normal to HD. And when we do that, hello, it's overheated. Okay, hang on. The O3 air unit overheats if you don't have air blowing on it. So I have a little battery powered fan that I use when I'm working on the bench. Aha, yes. Now everything is wonderful. We have a widescreen display on our Betaflight configurator, and it is matching what we're seeing here in the goggles. The only thing we have to do now is actually set up our OSD because this is just a cluttered mess. And for that, I am gonna go back to this paste bin and I'm going to select the whole thing. There we go. 
copy. This is my OSD setup. It's how I like to do it, and I just copy it to all my quads, paste that in, and type the word save. Lovely. Lovely. That's how I like it to be. You don't have to have it the same way. You can drag these things around any way you like, but that's how I do it. And you can do the same just by copying that paste bin. All of these settings look real freaking good. I wonder why they're not using Galileo on the GPS. Usually you want that on, but I'm going to assume that GEPRC knows something I don't know. Oh, Failsafe is set to GPS rescue. That's brave. iFlight, for example, always ships their quads with Failsafe set to just fall out of the air and leaves it to the user to enable GPS rescue because they don't want to take a chance that you might not understand what you're doing uh, and end up with GPS rescue flying you to the moon. Uh, I am going to make one change, and that is here, allow arming without fix. Well, this option lets you take off without GPS fix, and GPS rescue won't work, but you can still fly in acro mode, and if you fail safe, you'll just fall out of the sky, or you can wait to have GPS lock if you choose to. This is useful in case you're flying somewhere where you don't have GPS or can't get GPS, and you just want to be able to go ahead and fly anyway. I'm going to load my rates, uh, and I'm going to do that by going to my custom preset source, if you want to use my custom preset source, you can. You just hit add new source and you type these, this text exactly as you see here. In my preset source, I can find my OSD presets. I've got that already. I'm gonna put my rates in. And for cinematic quads, I like to use the 533 racing rates. I'll just hit save and reboot on that. What about aux modes? Arm angle horizon. Boo, GEPRC for shipping a quad with horizon mode as one of the default modes. Boo, horizon mode sucks. No one should fly in horizon mode. If you fly in horizon mode and you like it, that's up to you. Obviously, you're a grown adult. You can do what you want. But uh, I think horizon mode is, teaches bad habits, and I would prefer that manufacturers didn't ship with horizon mode, and everybody just for, uh, forgot that horizon mode exists. I'm going to go to my presets, and I'm going to load my standard aux modes. Now my aux modes are set up correctly. I think that's about it. Oh wait, I have to bind the receiver. Um, by the way, if I'm going through some of this stuff a little too fast because this isn't like a super in-depth tutorial, I have a super, super in-depth tutorial that I made just for beginners who know v almost nothing about FPV. I'll put a link to it in the video description below. It takes you through building your own quadcopter, but even if you decide not to build that exact quadcopter, or maybe you don't want to build a quadcopter at all, there's a whole bunch of tutorials for how to actually set up a quadcopter, including setting up aux modes and so forth. It's super, super useful, and I think that any beginner to FPV could benefit from watching it. I'll put a link to that playlist down in the video description below, as well as I, I could, might even be able to put a card on screen somewhere that'll pop out if you want to watch that. Meanwhile, let's continue with this. This quadcopter that I'm working with right here has an Express LRS receiver on it. So what I'm about to show you now is how to bind an Express LRS receiver. If you have bought the quadcopter with a different type of receiver, for example, FreeSky or Crossfire, I'll put links in the video description below. I know I've got a Crossfire tutorial. It's been a long time since I had a quadcopter with FreeSky. I may not have a FreeSky tutorial for how to bind. Somebody's got that. I'm going to show you how to do it with Express LRS right here, though. And the first thing I'm going to do is, in my radio, I'm going to press the Sys key. That will take me to the Tools menu. On some radios, notably Jumper and some older FreeSky radios, there is no Sys key. You long press the Menu key to get to the Tools menu. Once in the Tools menu, I will see the Express LRS tool. Uh, if you don't see that, you may need to download and install it. That's not going to be a topic for this video. Uh, that is going to be a topic for a video, which I will link in the video description below. It's my Express LRS definitive setup guide or getting started guide. We're going to assume that you've got Express LRS in the menu at this time. We're going to run that by clicking the jog wheel. And then we're going to go all the way down in the menu to bind. And we're going to bind. There are several other steps that could have gone wrong for you. For example, you may not be, the, the, the Lua script may run, but it doesn't load. Uh, and there are some setup steps that you should have done before now that you may not have done. Uh, again, I'm going to refer you to my beginner guide. Links in the video description below if you need more explicit steps about how to get started with all this stuff. Sorry, but we can't fit it all into this one video. Once we do that, the radio, the radio, 
will not stay in binding mode. We gotta put the receiver in binding mode. Okay, fine. I wanna show you on this quadcopter that the receiver is up here in the front of the quadcopter. And if I plug in a battery, you will see a little blue LED where the receiver begins to light up. The way to put this receiver into binding mode is, does it have a bind button? It does have a button. Let's see if that works. No, 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 no. It's not a bind button, it's a bootloader button. Here's how you put an Express LRS receiver into binding mode. What you're gonna do is you're gonna plug in the battery, wait for a single blink of the LED from the receiver and then unplug it. Just like that. We're gonna do that again. And the third time we're gonna leave it plugged in. And what I want you to see is that the LED on the receiver is now, instead of going blink, 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 it's going blink, 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 a double blink. That means the receiver is in binding mode. From there, we're gonna go back to our radio. We're gonna highlight bind and it should bind. Yay, it did bind. That could have gone way less smoothly and would have been annoying, but it wasn't annoying, it worked. And now we can see we have some motion. When I move the sticks on the controller, we've got motion in the receiver tab. Now, there are a couple other steps that you'd wanna do, including checking your endpoints and your channel map. We're not gonna do that in this video. Again, those are, those are things I go into more detail on in my beginner build series, and I have links in the video description below to those videos, so check them out if you need to. I am gonna make one change here, though. I don't know why they ship it with telemetry disabled. If you have an Express LRS or a Crossfire receiver, you want telemetry enabled. Even if you never use it, there is no reason not to have it, and sometimes you might want it, and it being missing will make something not work. So we're gonna enable that and save and reboot. We're also gonna to need to install the battery pad and the battery straps. Oh, very nice. There's plenty of room here for the battery straps to slide through. Very, very good. Oh, I take it back. There is not plenty of room. If you make me take off the gosh dang top to get the battery strap through, zero out of 10. I got it, yeah, okay. Uh, I guess we need to install the GoPro mount. You know what though? This has got the O3 on it. We don't need a GoPro. That's it, it is ready to go fly. But this is a setup video, not a flight video. If you wanna see my full review of this quadcopter, including some test flights, I'll put a card on screen where you can see that, as well as a link down in the video description below. As well, if you're interested in this quadcopter, uh, but you haven't purchased it yet, you might wanna check out my review of the iFlight Chimera 7 Pro, which is a competitor to this. They are both very similar in their specs, and I think that you should definitely be looking at both of them before you make your purchase. I'll put a, a card on screen to my review of the Chimera 7 Pro, as well as a link down below in the video description. I'll see you in one of those videos.